Hi guys, it's Miss Courtney. Um, we're gonna do a butterfly steam activity today. So to start our activity, I thought we would read this book, which is about butterflies. You can see this beautiful blue uh, butterfly in the pattern. It's called a great purple hair streak. That's this kind of pat uh, butterfly, a great purple hair streak. Um, and the story is called, A Butterfly is Patient. The author is Diana Hutz Aston, and the illustrator or the people person who draws the picture is Sylvia Long. So let's go ahead and start our book. Look at that, it already opens up onto a beautiful page of butterfly wings. You'll notice both pages look exactly the same. And as something we're gonna learn about later called symmetry. Here's a picture of all the beautiful caterpillars. I really like this one, the green baron. I think it looks cool. Which one's your favorite? Pick out a favorite caterpillar from all their designs. That one we know, that's a monarch. Learn about those in school. A butterfly is patient. <clears throat> A butterfly is patient. It begins as an egg beneath an umbrella of leaves, protected from rain, hidden from creatures that might harm it, until the caterpillar inside chews free from its egg case, tiny, wiggles, hungry to grow. You see, this is the great purple hair streak, that blue butterfly in the front, that's its egg, and the caterpillar's inside starting to chew its way out. It has this beautiful leaf to eat soon. A butterfly is, oh, a butterfly is creative. A caterpillar feeds on leaves, eating so much that it might must molt or shed its skin. Molt means to shed your skin like snakes do. Many times, it can grow up to 30,000 times larger than it was when it took its first bite. So here, this tiny, right here, this is its first instar, right here. And after 15 days, after 21 days, after 26 days, now it's a pupula, that's what it's called. After 26 days, it starts to form its chrysalis. After 38 days, it's in a little cocoon. Um, 38 days more, and look, the butterfly's coming out, and then it becomes a butterfly. This is a common buckeye butterfly. Okay. Once a caterpillar has eaten all it needs, it creates a protective covering called a chrysalis. Curled inside the chrysalis, it is growing wings. And now it is time for metamorphosis, form one for, changing from one form to another. A butterfly is helpful. Butterflies, like bees, help pollinate plants so that they can reproduce or make more seeds. As a butterfly flits from flower to flower, Spring, sipping nectar, tiny grains of pollen cling to its body, body, then fall away onto other flowers. Seeds are only produced when pollen is transferred between flowers of the same species. This is called pollination. So basically, when this zebra longwing, that's what this is called, a zebra longwing butterfly, comes to sit from this beautiful orange flower and then hops over to this white flower, it takes some of the orange flower's pollen with it and puts it on the white flower. And then they mix together to make more seeds and more types of flowers. A butterfly is protective. Ooh, let's learn what that means. Butterfly use their wings to protect themselves from predators, such as hungry birds, lizards, and other insects. Some butterflies have markings on their wings called eye spots. Scientists don't know what they are used for, perhaps to scale, scare away predators or attract mates. Wings can help butterflies camouflage. Look, this is a leaf, but right next to it is a butterfly that looks just like a leaf. It's blending in or using camouflage. These camouflage or hide themselves in their environment. One kind of butterfly, the peacock butterfly, makes its hissing sound by rubbing its wings together. Look, there's a cricket and this, this praying, or it's praying mantis. And this praying mantis might want to eat this butterfly, but he can't see it because it's hidden. A butterfly is poisonous. Ooh, some butterflies are poisonous. Let's learn about them. The warning colors of some butterfly's wings, yellow, reds, oranges, whites, and blacks, tell predators that they are poisonous or bad tasting. Monarchs called pipe vine swallowtails eat poisonous plants as cats as caterpillars so that they become poisonous as adults. Birds and other insects have learned not to eat them. So this is that poisonous butterfly, the pipe vine swallowtail. So if you eat this, you'll get really sick. And this is what it looks like as a caterpillar. And these are the poisonous plants it eats. A butterfly is spectacular. Oh, spectacular. That's a great word. That means amazing, awesome, unique, one of a kind. And you can see the different kinds of butterflies here. The moonlight jewel, 
the painted Jezebel, the elbow period, the blue morpho. Um, this one is the zebra swallowtail. Oh, we saw that one. Alma's 88. Oh, because it has the number 88 on it. That is really cool. Beautiful butterflies. A butterfly is thirsty. To find flowers, butterflies smell the air with their antennae, or that means two antennas on the top of their head. They taste with their feet, but sip nectar, the sweet liquid produced by many flowers, with their tongue that coils and uncoils. This is their tongue right here. You see it? It's like this long thing. Some butterflies get their nourishment or their food from rotting fruits or minerals. Often a kaleidoscope of butterflies, that's what a group of butterflies are called. It's called a kaleidoscope. Um, gathers as a puddle club in mud near a pond or a lake to drink water rich in soil and minerals. So that's what they're doing. This kaleidoscope of butterflies is drinking from the pond. They're a puddle club. A butterfly is big. The rare queen Alexandra's bird wing is the largest butterfly in the world with wings that can span one foot. That's like this big, guys. That's like the length of this book. It's like if the butterfly's wing was this big. That's crazy. It lives in the rain forest in northern Papua New Guinea. Right here in this map, this red dot. The smallest is the rarest seen Asian small blue in Afghanistan with a wingspan of less than one third of an inch. This small, look, look how small that butterfly is compared to this one. This one's so big and this one's so small. A butterfly is scary. Scaly, I'm sorry, a butterfly is scaly. They're not scary, they're scaly. A rainbow of shiny powdery scales cover the wings of a butterfly. Scales stacked with shingles, like shingles on a roof. Without scales, its wings would be as transparent as the wings of a bee or a dragonfly. The colors, patterns, and shapes of a butterfly's wings have a purpose. Some use their patterns of colors to uh, attract mates. In places where the climate is cool, dark scales absorb heat and keep them warm. Butterflies are cold-blooded and must have a body temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Look, it's showing you the scales up here. Isn't that cool? That's what the wing looks like without a magnifying glass, and this looks like it was up close. A butterfly is not a moth. Ooh, that's showing the difference. Butterflies and moths belong to the same family of insects, the Leporido family, which means scale wings. They are the only insects with scaly wings, but there are differences between them. Moths appear on Earth between 100 and 190 million years ago, and butterflies 40 million years ago during the Cretaceous period, period, which was flowing plants and the nectar most butterflies need to survive evolved. So moths are actually way older than butterflies because the food that butterflies like the most didn't show up for a long time. Nearly every kind of butterfly flies during the day. So these are butterflies fly during the day while moths fly at night. A moth spins a cocoon made of silk while a butterfly wraps itself in a chrysalis of exoskeleton made from its skin. So here are the differences. Butterflies are diurnal, or a big word that means they're awake during the day, and moths are nocturnal, or a big word that means awake during the night. Butterflies make their, make their cocoon out of their own skin, this special kind of skin they grow, and moths, kind of like silkworms, make their cocoon out of silk. A butterfly is a, travel, a traveler. Most butterflies, such as the red emerald or the common buckeye, migrate a short distance to find a warmer place. But some, like monarchs, these are all the pretty orange monarch butterflies, travel far. Although monarchs weigh only as much as a few rose petals, they can fly almost 3,000 miles from Canada in their warmer home in Mexico at a rate of 20 miles per hour. Glider pilots have reported seeing monarchs flying at an altitude of 11,000 feet, higher than some clouds. That's crazy. A butterfly is magical. Monarchs gather in huge numbers in the forests of central Mexico waiting for spring. Then they can fly north to the milkweed plants in North America, where they lay their eggs. Now it is time again for their metamorphosis. So now the butterflies have landed in their warm home in Mexico and they're going to grow their cocoons and lay their eggs. A butterfly is patient. Oh, we're back at the beginning again. The egg hatches, the caterpillar emerges, feasting on leaves before it unwraps itself into a warm, protected chrysalis, patiently waiting. So it just, it's a caterpillar and it just opened up from its chrysalis, just like at the beginning of the book. 
to soar. Look, these are the beautiful, this is the great purple hair streak, the same butterfly in the front again. Look, these beautiful butterflies. And just like at the beginning, we had all the different kinds of caterpillars. Right there. Now we have different kinds of butterflies, the same kinds. There's that kind I liked at the beginning, the satyr, the eastern tiger twall sail. Aren't they beautiful? I think they're beautiful. Okay, so one thing I do want us to notice about butterflies is that if you cut a line right down the middle of this great purple, um, what's this one called? Great purple hair streak. If you put a line right down the middle, this side looks the exact same as this side, kind of like our faces. You have one eye on one side, one eye on the other side, they look exactly the same. All butterflies, look, if you look at this one, right here, the same dot is on this side, the same dot is on this side, the same dot on that side, the same dot on this side, oh, sorry, you couldn't see, that same dot, 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 dot. Orange, orange, stripe, 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 stripe. They look exactly the same on both sides. That is called symmetry. We are going to do an activity with symmetry. So the first thing you're gonna do, is, well, here's everything you're gonna need. You're gonna need a piece of paper, you're gonna need scissors, you're going to need a pen or a pencil, you're gonna need paint, you're gonna need a glass of water just for painting, and you're gonna need some paintbrushes. That's everything you need for this activity. I'm actually gonna move and come sit over here so you guys can see me do it up close. So, hi guys. I hope you like the book. Hi, hope you like the book. We're gonna go ahead and start on our project now. Let me just tilt this up a little bit. Okay, hi guys, we're gonna go ahead and start our project now. So now that we've read this beautiful butterfly book, I really liked it by the way, we're gonna talk about the symmetry that butterflies have. So first, I'm just gonna move all my supplies over here because right now the only thing I need is my paper and my pencil or my pen. So you are going to take your paper and you're going to draw a butterfly on it. So, oh, actually, I'm sorry. You're gonna fold it in half, just like this. And because butterflies look exactly the same on both sides, you only need to draw half of a butterfly. So I'm drawing its body. I'm drawing one of its antennas. See, I'm only drawing half of it. Its body and its antenna. Now I'm gonna draw its wings. Wing one, wing two. It doesn't have to look perfect, but I would say that looks half of a butterfly. I didn't draw anything on the other half. I just drew one half. Now with my paper still folded, I'm gonna cut out my butterfly. Remember my thumb goes on the top and my fingers on the bottom. So I would cut out my butterfly just like this, cutting it out. I'm not gonna cut the whole thing because funny enough, I already cut one out right here. So I've cut out my butterfly. It was folded, then I cut it out and I open it up and it's a butterfly. Looks just like that. Now I'm gonna open it up. This is the important part. I'm gonna open my butterfly. Now I'm gonna start to paint it. So I'm gonna use some blue. Blue is one of my favorite colors. I'm gonna use some blue. Let's see, I'm gonna draw some dots right here. Dot, 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 dot. I have my four dots. Notice, I've only done it on one side. This is really important. I'm not touching this side at all. I'm only doing it on this side, okay? Making them really thick. You want your paint to be really, really thick. Okay, now I'm gonna take some orange. I love blue and orange together. I think those are two colors that look so nice together. They're actually called complementary colors. Or are they, no, they're contrasting colors. I'm gonna add some stripes. Stripe, stripe. Gotta get some more paint. Stripe, stripe. You gotta make sure they're really thick. You wanna put the paint on really thick. Okay, and then let's see. I want to dip my paint in the water so I can use my paintbrush again. That's why you have the water there. Wipe it off on this paper. I'm gonna do purple now. now I'm gonna paint this whole section right here purple. Into kind of a moon shape. And again, you wanna make it really, really thick. And you'll see why in just a second. Okay, and then the last thing I'll add is, well, let me put the paper down. The last thing I'll add is some green. 
Let's do some green with this one. Wash this off on my paper. Okay, some green just like this. And I'm gonna put some more dots right down the middle. Now you can do more on your butterfly. I'm doing this quick since it's just an example, but if you wanna paint your whole butterfly so you can tell what color the whole thing is, you can totally do that. In fact, I think the more colorful, the better. Because most butterflies, like we saw in our book, are really colorful. Butterflies are a very colorful insect. Okay, so now that I have finished my beautiful butterfly, you see I finished one half. I've colored this half, but I haven't colored it all. Now you're going to just fold the butterfly and you're gonna push on it. So I'm gonna push on it. Really push on this butterfly. So all my paint, okay? And I might even press on it and count it. Count, let's count to five together. One, two, three, four, five. Good job. Now that I'm done and I've pressed on it, I'm going to open my butterfly up. And look, now that I've pressed on it, it's the same on both sides. That is symmetry. Symmetry is when something is exactly the same on one half as it is in the other. So now we've learned a little about butterflies. Now caterpillars um, come from eggs and then they become into chrysalises made from their own skin and they turn into butterflies. We learned about some of the different things butterflies can do. We learned about the difference between moths and butterflies and you guys can do a butterfly symmetry activity just like this. Thanks so much for joining me. Please send me any pictures on the Meritstein page um, or to your own teacher of whatever activities you want uh, from this butterfly. I would love to see some pictures of your butterflies. I think they would be beautiful. All right. Bye guys.